Hey guys, so I'm sorry I can't be in class today, but I wanted us to continue on with our critical thinking and the burger dilemma. So when we talk about critical thinking, we're taking a, talking about using previous knowledge and using it to apply to other situations. So for example, taking your knowledge of, let's say, um, cells and cell membranes and applying that information to um, a discussion of how perhaps the Tylenol murders interrupted uh, cell membranes. So you don't have the knowledge of the Tylenol murders necessarily, but if you look at the situation, you can see uh, that the poison affects the cellular membrane, and then you would be able to tell me that, well, because the cellular membrane was disrupted, then it caused cell death, and this is what led ultimately to the death of the person. So we're going to use our knowledge as we go along and apply it to a specific situation, and this one is called the burger dilemma. So we're going to talk about what would you do? And this was just developed by George Seidel and Christine Lodwick, and it's a TED Ed. And so we're going to go through, and I'm going to pause at specific points since this is an Ed puzzle, and you're going to answer the questions. So let's start with your ethical dilemma. A few years ago, you founded a company that manufactures meatless burgers. Your product is now sold in stores worldwide, but you've recently received awful news. Three unrelated people in one city died after eating your burgers. The police concluded that a criminal targeted your brand, injecting poison into your product in at least two grocery stores. The culprit used an ultra-fine instrument that left no trace on the packaging, making it impossible to determine which products were compromised. Your burgers were immediately removed from the two stores where the victims bought them. The deaths are headline news. The killer is still at large, and sales have plummeted. You must quickly develop a strategy to deal with the crisis. Your team comes up with three options. One, do nothing. Two, pull the products from grocery stores citywide and destroy them. Or three, pull and destroy the product worldwide. Which do you choose? All right, so which one are you going to choose? Are you going to do nothing? Are you going to do a recall citywide? And are you going to do a recall worldwide? And tell me why. It doesn't have to be a lot of information. Just tell me why you would choose that. Okay, so here's the next part of the story. Explains that a recall is not required by law because the criminal is fully responsible. She recommends the first option, doing nothing, because recalling the product could look like an admission of fault. But is that the most ethical strategy? To gauge the ethicality of each choice, you could perform a stakeholder analysis. This would allow you to weigh the interests of some key stakeholders, investors, employees, and customers against one another. With the first option, your advisors project that the crisis will eventually blow over. Sales will then improve, but probably stay below prior levels because of damage to the brand. As a result, you'll have to lay off some employees, and investors will suffer minor losses. But more customers could die if the killer poisoned packages elsewhere. The second option is expensive in the short term and will require greater employee layoffs and additional financial loss to investors. But this option is safer for customers in the city and could create enough trust that sales will eventually rebound. The third option is the most expensive in the short term and will require significant employee layoffs and investor losses. Though you have no evidence that these crimes are an international threat, this option provides the greatest customer protection. Given the conflict between the interests of your customers versus those of your investors and employees. Which one are you going to decide to do? 
Will you do nothing? Will you pull them citywide or will you pull them worldwide? I want you to tell me what you would do at this point and why. Has your view changed and why or why not? Let's keep going with the story. this decision, you could consider these tests. First is the utilitarian test. Utilitarianism is a philosophy concerned with maximizing the greatest amount of good for the greatest number of people. What would be the impact of each option on these terms? Second is the family test. How would you feel explaining your decision to your family? Third is the newspaper test. How would you feel reading about it on the front page of the local newspaper? And finally, you could use the mentor test. If someone you admire were making this decision, what would they do? So which one of these tests do you think is the most important? Do you think it's the utilitarian, the family, the newspaper, or the mentor test? And tell me why. Here's the very last part. Johnson & Johnson CEO James Burke faced a similar challenge in 1982 after a criminal added the poison cyanide to bottles of Tylenol in Chicago. Seven people died and sales dropped. Industry analysts said the company was done for. In response, Burke decided to pull Tylenol from all shelves worldwide citing customer safety as the company's highest priority. Johnson & Johnson recalled and destroyed an estimated 32 million bottles of Tylenol, valued at $250 million in today's dollars. 1.5 million of the recalled bottles were tested, and three of them, all from the Chicago area, were found to contain cyanide. Burke's decision helped the company regain the trust of its customers, and product sales rebounded within a year. Prompted by the Tylenol murders, Johnson & Johnson became a leader in developing tamper-resistant packaging, and the government instituted stricter regulations. The killer, meanwhile, was never caught. Burke's decision prevented further deaths from the initial poisoning, but the federal government investigated hundreds of copycat tampering incidents involving other products in the following weeks. Could these have been prevented with a different response? Was Burke acting in the interest of the public or of his company? Was this good ethics or good marketing? As with all ethical dilemmas, this has no clear right or wrong answer. And for your meatless burger empire, the choice remains yours. So what do you, would you do? Justify your decision with information from the video. And then I want you to tell me what you thought about Johnson and Johnson's decision. Was it strictly business or do you think that he had the world's better interests at heart? And would there have been as many copycats had he not done that? So let's talk about the assignments that are due this week. I want you um, to do a 48-hour news ban. So I don't want you to look at any headlines. I don't want you to watch the news. I don't want you to read the newspaper. And I want you to write a paragraph about how you felt before, during, and after the ban. Was it hard to avoid news? Were you relieved that you didn't have to uh, have so many outside influences? Did you have to work hard to catch up after the ban or did you not worry about it? Um, and then I also want you to complete the critical thinking assignment on Blackboard. Read the directions very carefully. All of this is due on uh, September 11th. So you have yet another week to get that done. If you have any questions, make sure that you contact me. I hope everyone has a good week and I will hopefully see you next week.